seem like good people. You seem like lovely people. If you were drowning, I would piss on you. If you were on fire, I would throw you a stick. I suppose that's meant to be the other way around, but so was I when I came out of my mother, and now she walks funny, and I'm turned on by being strangled. Now, great job. Real fun. Real fun to be here, folks. minutes made you think that was going to be a good idea. <laughs> it's just, what I want you to understand, my darling, and what a, let, us, let us first analyse what you've done. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to lie to you, I have, I have jokes and sometimes I like to perform them, but if you want to contribute by living your entire life as a joke, fuck, I'll do you. That's okay with me. It's all right, you know. Here's a joke. A cunt walks into a bar. It's you. Hey, hey it's funny, because it's true, in any case. <laughs> you see, remember how before we were just talking, right? And you were lovely, okay? What I like about you is you didn't do anything other than sit down slightly too late, okay? You didn't do anything but sit, okay? You decided to do something. What the fuck? I don't know where you are, I don't care where you are. I'm like everyone you've ever known. The thing is... <laughs> I just... I, I, I want to I imagine how you started your day, okay? I just... What, what I imagine was that when you woke up and you saw the concrete in front of you and you saw the rest of the concrete that was in front of you and all around you because your dodgy mates had gotten tired of you defaulting on your bank loans and they threw you gently into the river and you slowly headbutted your way out of that and gave yourself severe brain damage you then thought to yourself the only thing that can fix this is I will wait until a young man who seems dangerous for reasons I don't understand <laughs> talks very quickly whereupon I will say now, that's me jump-starting my heart. I'm not like a normal human being, okay? <laughs> not gonna lie, I'm like the Model T human. Everyone has evolved beyond me, as was evidenced by the fact that I managed to accomplish a heckle that wasn't a heckle, it was just loud. <laughs> I just admire the work of anyone who will go, there are two things wrong here. One, the comedian is on stage. <laughs> I don't like that. I have severe brain damage. I, I am slowly bleeding from the face. But I would like very much, as I see through this haze of gelatin that was once my brain, I would like... As I look through the aeroplane jelly in front of me, I like aeroplane jelly, aeroplane jelly, it's me. As I look gently through that, and I don't even think he's wearing a red suit, I just think the entirety of him is red, because I'm slowly dying. I look gently, and I think, hmm. Hmm. Okay. The woman who sits late, bless her, she's from another time zone. She's female Doctor Who. Time means nothing to her, ladies and gentlemen. She sat down slightly late or early. We will never know. She is a time lord. Where is she? Who does anyone? No one knows. This man who sits on another plane of reality, a wonderful thing, because if he was on the same plane of reality as me, the heckler, I would be dead. What then happens? And I won't keep going on about this because he's had more attention than he'll ever get. But. And I. Where is he? Out of interest. Oh, hang on. Oh, good. I, I like someone who'll just identify themselves. I think that's quite nice. Hang on. Show me. Come and kiss my father. Come and kiss my father. Oh, very good. That's excellent. Yeah, I know. You heckle like someone who has a 1980s joke book in front of them that they don't understand. You sound like somebody reading the end of the sentence. Go and kiss your father! Oh shit, he's still going! How have I not stopped him? I thought that I was the Lee Harvey Oswald of coming to comedy. I thought I could literally just shoot someone with my sniper-like wit, but as it turns out, I can literally say, Sit down, cut! Followed by, Come and kiss your father. Which... To be fair to you, I've realised what's happened, and it's not, it's not your fault, it's the fault of the brain damage. What's happened 
is all you wanted to do was complete a whole sentence. And I know that you didn't complete your sentence thanks to our lax bail laws, but what happened? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, if you interrupt me, it fucking goes, okay? <laughs> what happened, which is quite lovely, is you manufactured possibly your own first ever complete sentence. And I wish to applaud you because that's the sort of thing that I enjoy. I like that you can come out to the comedy and experience something that you've never experienced before. And that is one lucid, coherent sentence. It took three goes. We're going to ignore the bit that was in the middle. Even the people near you heard and they didn't care. It's going to be remarkably like if you're going to cry for help in a fire. What happened? Too much? Uh, yeah. I was bullied at school. Fucking settle. But I wasn't bullied by a woman. I like you. We're gonna fuck. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You'll come late then too. Hey, oh, okay. Too much. Too much fast, not clever. I gently, I gently looked down. I realised you put your hand on that young boy's knee, possibly to stop him just ejaculating, and that's okay. Um, that's all right. But he looks like he could really do it with force. He could take out my eye if he was angry and horny at the same time, which I'm not gonna lie. I am because I've got a girl and something to fucking direct the rage at. What? You know, it's just a gorgeous thing, but what I would like to just applaud, okay, because it's a real testament, ladies and gentlemen, to the Western Australian education system, that this, this young man, or possibly old, or possibly not a man, who actually cares? I can't even remember, okay? At this late stage, this bit's gotten as long as the Bible, and the meanings become just as twisted. What's happened, folks, is he's finished his, and I think that this is lovely. I think that this is a genuinely good thing. That this, this person... Well, let's all listen. Yes. I like the fact you've just discovered irony for the first time in your life. Let's all listen. And yet, you've added to the mystery of it. wisdom completely and utterly incomprehensible and turning water into domestic violence. And what's happened? <laughs> this is the worst wedding ever. What's happened? Oh, this is something quite nice. We're actually quite the biblical audience. There's a moment they go, he just did the wedding of Cana. That's, well, I'm glad. When I see somebody blaspheme, I like to see it well-researched. That's the sort of thing that I like. And I like that, I, I like that you wear a hat indoors. You see, this is a good thing. I, I lean over and you, of course, the man who doesn't know how a chair works has a friend who doesn't know what a ceiling is. That makes complete sense. That's quite fun. I, th I think that, no, that's no, good. And he gives the thumbs up. This man does the stately clap followed by the stare. This guy literally just goes, whoo yee. <laughs> Which is at, yes, brother. Oh, it's his birthday. Oh, well, thank you. Now you see, this this is the sort of thing that we will take, and I will eventually return to Bogan Jesus. But when I reach the New Testament, we're currently in the Old Testament. In the beginning, there was nothing. Then there was chair, but nobody knew how to use it. And God did create one man, one man who wore as he a chain of gold about his neck and said as Godeth to this manneth, sitteth ye down in yon chair and lo, he could not. <laughs> and, the go and God did take one of the man's ribs and he did say, this will not help me sit in the chair and God did say, I don't care and he poured barbecue sauce on the rib and he had a good meal. He then, he went to the hog's breath cafe. Why not? It was open in the Garden of Eden and it was still too expensive. <laughs> and he said unto us all, Hmm, the man who cannot sit within a chair hath the eyes of a serial killer, and yet there are not enough humans here for him to serial kill. I shall make one more, and he shall be a young boy whose birthday it is today, for today is the day that I, God, have created him. And he shall be born with a hat. <laughs> Which means his mother walks funny too. Now. And I, I is that your mum over there? Did you, have you literally just pointed, oh. 
I'll, I'll be right back. Um, that's, that's just, that's just charming, you know. This is, this is a lovely thing. My God, you know. My God, a beautiful group of people. I like, what I like about you is you're not enjoying this. This is, yes you are? You're kind of enjoying it? That's, that's cool. I don't care about you. You look like you're 12. All right? Too soon? It is. Now, see, this is a beautiful thing. And this is, this is your mother here. And you're very proud of your young man. Oh, he's not yours. It's good to be back in Perth, ladies and gentlemen. I... Where nobody's mother is anybody's mother. And where's your father? Nobody knows. But if you would just go and sit on his knee and kiss him. <laughs> for that young man, we arrive now at the New Testament, ladies and gentlemen. For lo, we did at one stage evolve to understand how the chairs worked. And young Hattie did not understand how a roof could ever do a thing. And indeed, were his hairline ever to recede, we would not snow, for it is completely covered by the cap. But then God sent his only son to earth and his idiot half-brother. <laughs> and the first son was sent to Bethlehem. And the second son was sent to North Perth. <laughs> which has roughly the same amount of dust as Bethlehem in the summer. And lo, he did say, what you'll do is this. You will go. There will be a young man. He will look like an evangelist. You will interrupt him, and then you will experience what is known as hell on earth. <laughs> but you will do something to redeem yourself. Do not attempt to contribute further, for your redemption is already at hand. For lo, there is a prophecy that a young idiot, who had never once completed an entire sentence, shall, in increments of three, complete that sentence. And we won't know its meaning, for Bogan Jesus is too complicated for us. But lo, as it was written in the New Testament, Let's all listen. <laughs> I don't know what it means, but it sounds good, doesn't it? And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when you had some jokes and then you got interrupted. And it's, see, it's not my fault, folks. You know, I just... I, w I would like so much to just do a joke, just any, any punchline at all. Indeed, in his model, just the punchline, none of the build-up. <laughs> I would love to do that, but unfortunately I lack the, the wisdom of Bogan Jesus. <laughs> However, as a mere student of the Bogan Bible, I can tell you that there is an end to the prophecy about Jesus' idiot half-brother. And lo, it was said that shortly there would be an interval. And during the interval, Jesus' idiot half-brother would go outside for a cigarette. There were, however, another 200 people at the show, and some bits of wood in the car park. I think we can all agree. You know what to do. My name is John Robertson. You are a beautiful group of people. Good night.